This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us at uh, the Cyber Underground. I'm Dave Stevens, your host. And today we're going to continue with how to be a hacker. And we're still looking at recon and enumeration of hosts on the network and how to look at what's on your network by looking at what's flying around inside the network on a binary level. We're going to look at packet analysis today. Thanks for joining us. And with me today, I have my guest, Assistant Professor Hal Cochran from Kapiolani Community College, part of the University of Hawaii system. And you teach this stuff. This is your field. Yeah, you do I'm the networking classes. Really excited to be. I've, 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 I've been uh, uh, teaching networking for some time and uh, I'm looking forward to. Not just teaching, I mean doing. You did. And yeah. doing, yes. yes so I, bring I, us up to speed I, on your history of, of networking. Like you have an ICS background, right? I, Where'd you start out? Yeah, I, uh, I'm a graduate of the University of Rhode Island. Uh, I got my bachelor's uh, in, my master's uh, there. I started out uh, on, the, on the help desk as a, a Mac and a Unix guy. And then after about a year, I, I, I went into uh, Linux and, uh, Linux and uh, Unix. Uh, sysadmin, which included you know a lot of networking at the time. We didn't have a lot of specialization, so everybody kind of had a. You were the IT guy, thing. right? Yeah. Now and, we specialize. Yeah. And when I I uh, decided to come out to Hawaii, I uh, I, I came out here for a, a job as a network admin at Honolulu CC, and so I was a network admin there for three years before I moved over to uh, to Kapilani CC to teach. And you've been there what uh, six teaching. years, seven years? Uh, I'm going on eight years. Going on eight years now, and that's Hawaii twelve years, wow. and uh, going on eight years at Kapilani. Yeah. yeah, I'm glad to have you. Okay, I'm really excited to be here. Thanks Let's do this. We're, we're talking about uh, practical pack, packet analysis, and we got a couple of books here. If you guys want uh, out there in uh, in uh, YouTube land to look at what the books look like for these, uh, we're going to give you a screenshot of these books and. Uh, this will get you up to speed. Wireshark 101 will get you from ground zero up to where you, how you know uh, you're using the tool right, and then the pra practical packet analysis, how that teaches us a little bit more about how you apply this in mm -hmm. several different arenas, security and, and what else. Yeah, the first book here is, is like a reference manual. How do I specifically do this and that? How, how, the, the, the second book is how do I apply this to the real world? How can I use this on my network? I can use it to analyze my network, toast you my network. Or if I'm so inclined, use it to, you know, to capture other people's uh, information on my uh, network. And 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 Wireshark, uh, this is an open source tool. So this is one of the the, the absolute best tools that you that you will pot, uh, ever get for free. It's right up there with Kali and some some of those other open source uh, you know free projects that uh, you know uh, the Apache web server that are, are just amazing and. And, and and out there under the open source license. Well, Wireshark is uh, is one of those tools, and it's got uh, an incredible community supporting yeah. it. Yeah, you know, people make tools and plugins for this stuff all the time. Exactly. Uh, so a lot of support out there. So besides books that you that that you can purchase, there's all kinds of of, of sites and information out there because it's open source. There, there's there's communities and and uh, you know tutorial web websites and, and, and all sorts of information out there that you can just get for free if you want to really uh, drill down into how, how, to, how, how to, uh, to use Wireshark. And you can, you can really uh, take Wireshark to a, to a real high level if you, re if you really want to dig into it. Really, no, this, this really runs on Mac and Windows and Linux, whatever you're running. I haven't this seen it run on. on a Mac, but it definitely runs. I have it on a Mac. It does. Yeah, you'll see one of the screenshots in here is actually on a Mac. Great, great. <laughs> it runs great on a Mac. I have uh, not used Toolbar's that. a little different, but it works great. Yeah. It definitely works on just for any version of Windows. Uh, it it runs on Linux. Uh, the newer versions not only uh, can sniff uh, Ethernet, they, they can do they they can do wireless, and there are even new modules that that, that can sniff USB, so you can see traffic moving uh, across on. Uh, USB interfaces. Well, let's th let's talk about what that the traffic is in a second. But where do, where do I get Wireshark? How do I get that? Oh, you can just download it from the site. I believe it's just Wireshark.org, mm -hmm. and it's a free download. Download it and install it. And there's a uh, a library that always wants to install uh, called I think it's the PCAP library uh, that is kind of the low level calls that actually do the 
capture of the network traffic as they're coming through your network interface card. So there's really two things to install, but as you're installing Wireshark, it will usually interrupt and say, do you want to install this uh, PCAP library choose, as well? Yes, and yeah. if you don't have it already installed, then you should choose yes. Now, the, the PCAP is the, the extension of the files when you save a, a capture. That's what they end with, yeah. Exactly. The PCAP. So these are the libraries that do the capture and format it in such a way that, that Wireshark and other tools can then analyze them and present them uh, to you in such a way that that you can see all the packets and, and you know, the other various parts of the, of the network traffic. Okay, th it works on wireless networks. Let's uh, put up that first screenshot. We're going to take a look at what the, the screen looks like. Now, this is what you see when you start capturing traffic on your network. Now, mm -hmm. what we mean by that is what, Hal? What are we doing when we capture traffic, and then what are we looking at on the screen right now? So the, the way that Ethernet networks work is that uh, all of the traffic goes out on the network identified by a, a, a number uh, called a MAC address that, that tells you which device on that network is it, is it meant for. But everybody sees it. And that's a physical address identifying that piece of hardware. That is a physical address yeah. that is burned into a chip on a network interface card. So uh, when the data goes out on the network it has that address in it but all of the devices all of the computers see the traffic it's only the one that has that address is the one that takes it and processes and then do something with it receives yeah. the message yeah. so now you can tell wireshark will go into what's called promiscuous mode in other words look at everybody's traffic everything that comes by capture it and let me see it and that's what we're looking at here we're, we're looking, looking at, at promiscuous a, a mode. stream yeah. of everything that the wire that the uh, the network interface card sees and the there are a variety of different protocols uh, that are running on any network we see uh, you know, TCP uh, which is transmission control protocol well, so what's a protocol that's, that's like a language right a protocol exactly it's a it's a set of rules for communicating so one of the examples I used is if if, 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 if you're if you're speaking Chinese and I'm speaking Russian, we're not going to be able to understand each other, right? We have to be speaking the same language, so using the same rules so that we can talk to each other. Right. Well, so we have these open standard protocols that no matter what manufacturer makes a network device, they use the same standards, the same rules, the same protocols so that they can talk to each other. Now, that's, that's only recent. That's within like the last 20, 30, 40 years uh, we've been developing yeah, these protocols. Yeah. In, in the beginning, your computer can only talk to one other computer or two other computers because you all program that same language, but you didn't make that available to the general public. There was a right? time when Macs couldn't talk to Windows machines and, and, and some microsystems machines couldn't talk to other, and everybody had their own proprietary thing. There was, there was Novell, and there was Apple Talk, and, and there was NetBIOS, and everybody had their own, and so no one could, could interact. But thankfully, uh, they realized that that was a huge mistake and, and, and they got together and made these open standards so that everybody is using the same rules so no matter what brand or what, what manufacturer you can you, you can you, we use the same internet we can talk to each other we can even exchange files now and uh, it's much more interop uh, so interoperable than ever was before. It helps third parties like uh, say Amazon makes their Alexa device and they want to put it on everybody's network. Well, now they have the ubiquitous protocol that they can just plug exactly. it into someone's wireless network, and it works with everybody's network because they all speak the same language. Otherwise, you'd have a version for this kind of network, a version for that, right. and it would be a, a, a nightmare. So in, in that screenshot, we were looking at the uh, source and destination, and there are two groups of numbers in there. Those are IP addresses, right? Can you describe those IP addresses? For those us? are IP addresses. So those are IP version 4 addresses mm -hmm. and, and that's primarily what's still being used on the internet but we are moving to a new version called IP version 6 addresses which, which looks drastically look different <laughs> considerably different <laughs> yeah than those IP but these are uh, groups of uh, three numbers they're all called octets they're all between 0 and 255 and they represent a unique address on that particular network or subnet so those sources and the destinations they're referring to the uh, transmission from a source device to a destination device, and you're capturing exactly. what uh, protocol we're using. We see the TCP is highlighted there. And what else can we see there over on the right in the uh, info column? 
In the info column, we can see some of the, uh, the flags or the different options that are set within the packet. So like that very first one we see, that's a, a, a TCP packet with a SYN bit. So that's the, that's the first sync message from, we're, to, we're communicating and we have to do a three-way handshake. Right? Exactly. So I have to send out a sync packet. You send back, uh, the next one we're highlighting there is SYN, sin comma, ACK. So that's the, I'm acknowledging your sync. Right? So we'd mm -hmm. send that back. And then the final one would be an ACK, the so, final acknowledgement. So right? it's exactly like me saying, I want to set up a c connection to, to talk to you. You respond, I acknowledge that you've made that request. And I respond, I acknowledge that you acknowledge, so now let's let's Now we're all on the same talking. page. And then we can start now we're, we're all synced up and ready to go. Let's start transferring data. So in that example in Wireshark, what we're looking at is that three-way handshake between two devices, and you know there's a conversation about to start, mm -hmm. and you can track that conversation. Uh, you can capture and follow uh, the, the entire thread of that conversation with Wireshark uh, and see exactly if, if it's... If it's, un if it's unencrypted, you can see exactly what's being said between those, those, uh, two, those two devices. So let's see the second screenshot now with uh, the traffic that's unencrypted, and we're looking at a Wireshark screen. And uh, I, I highlighted this, and uh, I also spoke German apparently when I did this. But uh, <laughs> as you can see, the protocol being used is HTTP, and there's no S on that, which means there's no security this is unencrypted on a website, and those are the two devices that are sending these messages back and forth. Now, Hal, we have three separate pieces of the screen. I've highlighted HTTP, and uh, down we have two more sections to, to talk about. Can you tell me what's going on in these other two sections and why they're important in this case? Uh, yeah, so uh, each, each of those lines is, like, is one piece of the, the larger conversation. That's a packet. Yeah. Yes. And so we break down the packet. We, we, we have a, an HTTP conversation where a client is requesting a web page, but it, it, it gets broken down into a number of smaller pieces. You know, it, it gets broken into packets and then those packets get sent out on the internet and then the, 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 the service and they'll, they'll be reconstructed to, you know, to recreate the original Request. So it gets chopped down or broken down in, into smaller pieces, sent out, and then reconstructed on the other end. So the, the middle part of the screen, that's the, that's the pieces of the packet that we can see. Uh, this is that, yeah, and, and, and the details of each part of the packet. So you can actually see... I can uh, see this is, this is a Mozilla browser. Yeah, so this, this is a Windows this machine. This is part of the HTTP uh, uh, protocol. That, that we're seeing here. The, the, these are the, the actual requests and the information and the headers that are, that are being sent uh, to the HTTP server as part of the request. Now, on the bottom, we actually see the actual data being sent in the packet. And the important piece we're, we're showing you now is since this is HTTP, it's unencrypted, uh, it's not secure, you didn't do HTTPS, obviously. But down below, you can see there is a password equals, and I etched it out so you guys can't see what the password was, but you can tell if I was just looking at some traffic going across the web in unencrypted form, I can now see someone's password and username being passed to the website, and, and then I can get your login credentials. So this might make people think about going to Starbucks and hooking up to the free Wi-Fi, because there might be someone sitting there with this, watching all the traffic going back and forth and waiting for that first careless person not to use HTTPS. Yeah. If, you, if you're using these plain text protocols like straight HTTP or FTP and Telnet, uh, then you're vulnerable to this. I mean, someone can capture this and they can see exact everything that you send. They can see username, they can see password. So if we use uh, encryption, as you said, HTTPS and there are, are uh, uh, there's a replacement for uh, uh, for Telnet. That's a secure shell SSH that uses encryption. Well, I could use a VPN. So that's a not, virtual private or, network. Or you yeah. could use a VPN. Or Which, you can use a secure version of FTP instead of instead of the unencrypted is the SFTP. So those are all protocols that we use for different functions. Now let's talk about ports too. Now the port, mm -hmm. uh, it's a doorway to a computer, and you have a number of these doorways to any given computer. But there's there's certain port numbers 
I think, 0 to 1,024. They're so common. Pretty much everybody knows these first 1,000 ports and, and what they're used for. Uh, for instance, uh, HTTP, you're going to get, most of the time, it's going to be port 80. Mm -hmm. Right. That, that's mainly what it is, and it's port 443 for HTTPS. Mm -hmm. So um, when we're looking at Wireshark, does a port matter too? Uh, absolutely. A, a port is how you identify a, a service that's running and listening on a, a server. So on a, uh, a single server can have a single IP address, but it can run multiple servers. It could be running a web server and an email server and a, and a file server all at, at the same time. So w when a packet arrives at that server's network interface card, how does it know does it, whether it belongs to the mail server, whether it should be going to the the web server, whether it should be going to the file server? Well, it's because of the, those services run on different ports. So we, we, uh, what happens is, is this something called... Are we going to have to take a break? We're going to come back. Okay. We're going to pay some bills. And then we'll talk more about what you can do with Wireshark. Until then, stay safe. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? And they told me they were making music. keeping our community safe. Every day, we move in and out of each other's busy lives. It's easy to take for granted all the little moments that make up our every day. Some are good, but others not so much. But that's life. It's when something doesn't seem quite right that it's time to pay attention. Because only you know what's not supposed to be in your every day. So protect your every day. If you see something suspicious, say something to local authorities. Welcome back to the Cyber, Cyber Underground. Sorry, I'm here with uh, Professor Hal Coker, and we're talking about Wireshark and how to be a hacker. And of course, uh, Hal, this is one of those tools where you could use it for nefarious purposes, and you could use it for good. And we're talking about both ways we can do this. But right now, we're just talking about how we identify connections between computers. Mm -hmm. And we have a couple of different identifying pieces of information that the computer needs to know and send in that packet so the receiving computer knows what to do with it, right? We're talking about has to have a port, has to have the right protocol, and let's, we haven't discussed services yet. So try to describe for me in plain layman's terms how I'm going to address this port so the computer knows I'm the computer that's supposed to receive that. It's supposed to go in this door, and it's, I'm supposed to do this with it. So the packet shows up at the server with an IP address and a port number attached to it. Think of the, the IP address is like the street address that gets you to the building. Mm. Port number tells you which apartment okay. or, uh, it should be. So uh, you can have multiple apartments. So you can have multiple services on a single uh, IP address. And that's how you can, you can have web servers and mail servers and coexisting uh, on a single IP address. On, on, they're all on listening in a different port. By listening yeah. on different ports. Yeah, OK. I understand that. And there are uh, somewhere around 65,000 usable ports on any, any internet. Host. So we've got a wide range of ports to choose from. Uh, yes. Yeah, which is a big security hole, right? When, when you first turn on a machine, if all those ports are open and listening, uh, that would be that, definitely a be a problem, major problem, right? So uh, uh, most people, when they when they get a server up, they will lock down any port that's not actually being actively used. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the best security. If it's a web server, you need 80 and 443 open, and not much else, right? So you can eliminate tens of thousands of addresses from your your repertoire of listening ports, right? That's right. Every open listening port is a, a door which could possibly be forced open. By a hacker to get into your system. So let's if talk it about. Does it need to be open? Close it. Close it up. We so when we're talking about um, passing packets back and forth and having Wireshark in promiscuous mode, uh, or the Wireshark tells the network card mm -hmm. to be in promiscuous mode, and we start capturing traffic, and uh, we're we're looking at a, a just a ton of traffic. How do we isolate a conversation between two systems? Oh, uh, we can do filtering. You okay. Filter. So how do we filter? What do we filter on? So uh, along the top uh, bar of the 
the Wireshark capture, there is a um, a filter uh, area where you can enter in. Uh, there, there's a a fairly simple expression language where you, where, where, where you can specify uh, what what you want to filter on. You can filter on IP addresses. You can filter on certain um, ports and protocols. Uh, so you can isolate that conversation so you can just see just those two computers talking exactly, exactly. and try to ga gather that information, mm -hmm. right? So if we could put that screenshot up when, whenever we have a chance, we're going to look at the, uh, the filter options up there at the top. Um, ah, here we go. So, yeah, so up there in the top left-hand corner, you see TCP port double equals, and in the uh, most of C++ languages for programming, double equals means um, we're comparing. So when the TCP port actually is port 80 and the UDP port is port 80, then give me that traffic and that's what we're looking at in there. It's just that port number in there. The expressions are actually really easy and I've, I've gone to uh, Wireshark.org and they've got them all listed out there mm -hmm. and it tells you exactly you know how to filter on what you're looking for. Yeah, it's, it's, it takes a, a, little, a little bit of practice uh, for some of the more complicated ones, but it's, ac it's actually pretty uh, uh, intuitive. Now we, we use this in hacking uh, to identify oh, traffic, yeah. well, some people <laughs> do, uh, but I mean, you use it for legitimate purposes in yeah. network diagnostics and oh. trying to keep up with what's going on on your network. How do you use it as a all network the time? Guy? This is a, a network is best tool. This is this is the way you can actually see what's happening on your network. If you have problems with uh, with latency, with drop packets, okay, what's any latency? kind of any kind of network issues. Latency just means that things are, are, are going too, too slowly. It means that there's some kind of delay right, mm. on your network. So your network seems slow. Uh, you, you're getting you know, error messages or timeouts or something. Uh, no, no, Wireshark will identify the, the really bad stuff in, with a black background and orange letters, right? Yes. That's, so you can filter right away. That's bad. So what mm -hmm. are some of the bad things that would flag in those colors? Uh, well. For example, there's, there's something called, uh, in, in the TCP protocol, there's something called a reset. And a reset is like an emergency shutdown. Like, uh, I've got a, a major error. I'm not going to talk to you anymore. Go away. And that's, that's what the reset is. And that, that never happens under normal circumstances. Under oh. normal circumstances, you, you have the, the SYN and the SYN act to, to set up. And then they have a nice controlled uh, shutdown. But the so reset you see a, you is, see the flag fin, is right? like an emerge. Yeah. yeah, you have the fin and the fanatic, which is the the normal, uh, you know, type of the departing message shutdown. Yeah. yeah, the reset is just like an emergency, like somebody pulled pull the plug. plug or something. Or if, <laughs> if you're seeing resets, then 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 it, 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 that's clearly a signal that 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 uh, something is wrong. Or if you see a, a lot of reset packets, if packets aren't getting through and they're getting lost, and you see a lot of uh, things being resent, uh, Wireshark will also identify those. As that, that was, those you're packets. talking about dropped packets. Drop packets. Dropped yeah, packets. If, you're, if you're dropping a lot of packets, that, that, that shows you that something's not right. So how would you identify and say someone's doing a, what they call a, like a sin attack? This is a stealth attack when they're just they're just looking for that first response from a server. I'm setting out a sin. I want your your acknowledgement, but then I never reply back to complete the conversation hookup. Right, that is only two of the three steps. You would just see in your in in your capture, you would just see sin after sin after sin after sin, without the the synac act. So it never completes. They they just keep sending sin so that they keep using up port numbers, using up resources, without ever completing the three-way handshake. So mm. you're leaving. It's kind of like you know, aha, you know, I pull the handshake back <laughs> and I and I leave you hanging. Well. If I leave you hanging 65,000 times, then I, you completely run out of ports, and then the, the next valid uh, c connection can't take place because there's no empty ports left. Right, 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 right. You, so until you reset it or something like that, right? And if you see port scans, sometimes you'll, you'll see uh, something, uh, you'll just see ports in order from one up to 65,000. You'll just see like a probe to each port. That, that's clearly someone scanning port, port scanning to see yeah. if there's if there's any open ports that they might be able to poke at and try to get in through. So that's part of the reconnaissance that uh, that's, that means but, but hopefully is doing ethical recon hackers will do. And they should let it's, you know in advance, I'm going to be port scanning. It could be <laughs> pen testing or it could be, uh, you know, 
somebody unauthorized trying to find a hole in in your network. Yeah. Now, there's a there's a bigger danger. We were talking about that uh, uh, some objects that are being sent across the wire uh, mm -hmm. can be captured and reproduced. Mm -hmm. So we got a third screenshot here of, of one of those captures. We're we're doing a capture, and then we look at the details of it. And in this capture, we can see in the blue content, the third line, image GIF. So we're actually trying to recreate an image from bytes going across. We captured this in one of our captures. And if I wanted to, I could save that as, uh, well, they selected raw here. But if you change it uh, to like a JPEG or a GIF, mm -hmm. you can usually recreate the image uh, rather handily. And uh, it says GIF. so. If I recreate the image, I'll just tag it with .gif, and I should be able to see the image that was transferred across the wire. And uh, again, if you're sitting at Starbucks, you're sending pictures to somebody, uh, watch out, because if I capture that traffic, um, I got your pictures, which is, that's kind of dangerous. Doesn't that, well, depending on what kind of pictures they are, yeah. especially, but it, it could be very dangerous. Yeah. Could be very dangerous. So objects uh, being transferred across could be reproduced, and not just pictures. You know, Any type over of contacts, object, web pages, uh, spreadsheets, yes, documents, spreadsheets, files, anything. Yeah. Uh, PDFs. People send PDFs of things. Email messages. Uh, emails. Uh, it can all be anything that goes across that network could be captured and could be recreated. So when I when I get a capture in Wireshark, I have the opportunity to save it as a .pcap file, mm -hmm. which means I can go into my little treasure trove of PCAPs and click, double click on one and Wireshark will pop up and it'll show me that conversation and I can start mm -hmm. filtering and searching through this stuff and exactly. I really want to geek out and I can start capturing traffic. You can start out. saving conversations. You can, you know, you can, this was the conversation from Starbucks on uh, April 16th at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Let me see what people were doing. Okay. Uh, yeah. now, now, if people want to know more, uh, we've got about a minute left, so let's wrap this up with we do this at Kepulani Community College in the U UH uh, system, and we teach the networking, ethical hacking, network security, cybersecurity fundamentals, mm -hmm. uh, this, this whole range of classes. And uh, we have an IT and a cybersecurity program with certificates of uh, achievement, and uh, we uh, articulate, that means we let people start uh, their undergraduate degree out of the community college system at uh, UH West which has a bachelor's in information assurance. Anything you want to say about your program? And uh, Just that Wireshark is, I mean, is, is, is one of the, the tools that we would use extensively in, in the networking class, in the network, network security, security class, class. Ethical hacking, we use it uh, again, yeah. We, we really try to emphasize real world tools and, and you know, how to do this, this uh, stuff hands on. And we also have an ICT learning. club that does the ethical hacking uh, penetration testing for companies in our local area, mm -hmm. which is really great too. Okay, and thanks for experience. being with us, everybody. That's the Cyber Underground for this week. Join us next week, and until then, stay safe.